Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Dolly Debauchery's Super Creepy Horror Show with your host, Dubsy Doll 83 Well, thank you, Charlie Z. That was a wonderful introduction. You're welcome, and you would be a terrible ventriloquist. Well, Emma Roberts has made her appearance, so there's that. Welcome to another episode of Dolly Debauchery's Super Creepy Horror Show, American Horror Story Edition, where we're talking about American Horror Story Cult, Episode 4, today. Okay, so this episode starts with a flashback to election nights. Um, it actually flashes all the way back to election, the day before election night as well. So it's, it's flashing back, flashing slightly forward, but not all the way forward. So you get to kind of find out a little bit more of the meat to the situation, and there are a lot of things revealed in this episode. Everybody in this this uh, American Horror Story universe, it's of course their polling station. Um, so we kind of get a little blurb from um, a few of the the principal characters in line. We see Allie and Ivy. We see Harrison and Meadow. Um, we get a little kind of intro to, to everyone there. And, uh, but before it's all said and done, a very bloody Chaz Bono comes in with Evan Peters, Kai Anderson, um, our resident cult leader, um, and is adamant that that is his polling station and he is going to vote. Uh, goes in and votes, and then we find out why Chaz Bono is so bloody, because Chaz Bono no longer has a hand. And you find out at the end of the episode why Chaz Bono no longer has a hand. It should be noted that obviously Chaz Bono's character, Gary, who is a grocery store manager, is indeed one of Kai's disciples. In this episode, we really get a bird's eye view of Kai's manipulation of his followers and how he's just able to really get them into his circle of trust. Um, and, you know, this like blue haired psycho is able to manipulate these people to a degree that is absolutely mind-boggling, but the thing is, as I've stated before, this season has absolutely nothing to do with the supernatural. This is reality. Um, this is how cults are started. People that have either weak constitutions or are going through really difficult financial or emotional times, when they are the most vulnerable, that's when people like Evan Peters' character, Kai, are able to swoop in and just take them not by force um it's almost like they're able to treat it like they're doing a favor for these people in this episode we see how kai harrison and meadow all first met um harrison's character is a personal trainer kai's personal trainer kai's been watching excuse my squeaky chair by the way um i'm leaning up against it a lot today because my back is just not liking me Anyway, but I digress again. I do that a lot. It's like choo-choo trains going down the track, and then choo-choo trains like, oh, squirrel! So, um, Kai has been watching Harrison. That's what he does with his targets. He watches them for a while, he sees where that weakness in the armor is, and then he swoops in. Um, he goes to the gym and requests Harrison as his personal trainer. And from there, in his 12 sessions, is able to get into Harrison's mind. And, you know, he finds out Harrison's home is being foreclosed on. His wife is, um, is well, she's um, had cancer, but she's in remission. But still, they suffered major financial and health issues within their life. And it's only getting worse. Well perfect time for Kai to come in. Harrison also has a, an ass rag of a boss and Kai sees Harrison being bullied and reminds him, hey, you don't have to let this guy bully you. Uh, there is no hierarchy in, in, in the way Kai kind of tries to, to put it out is basically labels are labels. There is no hierarchy. He's not your superior. He doesn't have any grounds to speak to you like this, and so what are you going to do about it? Well, you find out what he does about it. It's messy, but he totally deserved it. Dude bros always do, and I mean, come on, this guy was dude bro central. And as I said, we do find out more about Harrison and Meadow, and I have to say that before they became the neighbors from hell, they were actually a lot more likable, but also a whole lot more depressing. And I think that's what made them more likable is because so many of us are in, you know, real life is messy. Real life is not easy. 
Um, I know what it's like to go through financial hardships. It sucks. And I know what it's like to be sick. It sucks. And Harrison and Meadow, that is where they're at. Uh, they're not bad people, actually. They start out as not bad people at all. They're your next-door neighbors who are the nice next-door neighbors that you just, you know, you want to hang out with and, um, you know, shoot the shit with. They're cool people who are going through really hard times. Kai sees that, and that is when he is able to make them basically instruments in his world domination plot, which he straight up states in this episode, and he was not kidding. P.S. Can I just say how absolutely freaking terrifying Kai is? So, of course, in the last episode, we were more um, jarringly introduced to the smiley face killer. As they think it is, smiley face killers, actually, as we know. Um, so, in one of the scenes, while Kai is talking to Harrison in the sauna area, Kai draws a symbol in the... Um, steam on one of the windows and you'll never guess what that symbol is actually you probably already did guess yes it is in fact the smiley face that we have seen in every episode up until now that is either marking people for death or that is put up after those individuals have met their untimely demise and usually very bloody gory or uncomfortable demise so of course we know the blue-haired psycho is indeed a psycho Kai is extremely intelligent. Um, now, of course, he, he states different lies. I, 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 can assume, I can assume they're lies. Maybe they're not throughout the episode. Um, they was invited to Menzo when he was um, 10, that, I think 10 or 11, and that he's just, like, a genius. And um, his character is. But that's, if you think about it, some the, the people who have been able to manipulate the masses... Um, in history were extremely intelligent and extremely manipulative, but they knew how to use that intelligence to manipulate. And some of the most horrifying tyrants in history, that was their, their modus operandi. That was what they did. They found the weakness in the armor, they used their smarts, and they killed masses in many cases. Mass genocide, um, enslavement, everything that you can think of bad that has happened to mass, um, ma large groups of people, um, at the epicenter of it was either one or more extremely intelligent, manipulative, cunning, psychotic, really bad sociopathy, just out the wazoo, uh, very narcissistic, um, all these psychological terminologies that, you know, you see on Facebook posts about exes and stuff, well, that's what these guys were. Uh, they are, like, really the worst kind of exes. I mean, it's one thing to not water the plants and to, like, cheat on somebody with, like, their aunt, which is pretty gross, but still. Okay, not really. Well, yeah, it's gross to cheat on somebody with their aunt, but, like, ants can be young. I've been an ant since I was born. I don't want to cheat on anybody's. I am loving Beverly Hope. Uh, she is played by Adina Porter, who, if you watch True Blood, you remember Letty Mae Thornton, who is Tara's mom? Well, she's the one playing Beverly Hope, and I love her character. Um, she is a very angry woman with very good reason, because she works with some of the biggest assholes on Earth. One of them being Emma Roberts. But don't you worry about that. She just keeps getting the shit jobs. She's a, a television reporter. She's an on-the-field reporter, but she just keeps getting the shit jobs. Um, and they know what they're doing, and they are doing this just basically to be assholes. Um, her character, apparently, I don't remember uh, back, uh, I believe it was last year or the year before, where um, a an on-the-field reporter, some guys ran up behind her and yelled some inappropriate nonsense because that's what people do these days, I guess. And um, well, on this episode, they show that, that a similar situation happened to her, and it kept happening after the initial um, situation kept happening and kept happening and kept happening until she finally was just like, you know what? Enough is enough, and beat the piss out of the guy who jumped up behind her and, and said what he said. 
Well, this landed her um, on um, administrative leave from her job for a while. When she got back, Emma Roberts' character had pretty much swooped in and started getting all the good jobs. So she was stuck with the garbage ass reporting on grisly crimes. And you know, when she would rather be getting to do the fluff pieces like what Emma Roberts' character does for like a reflexology piece and like going and getting her nails done piece or whatever, well, uh, Beverly Hope gets to go to the landfill and report on a decapitated dead body that was found. Of course, needless to say, Kai sets his sights on her. He's been watching her on the news. He reads people's faces. He reads their feelings. He is very, like I said, he's very intelligent. He's got emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence can be very dangerous in the wrong hands. It's good to be emotionally intelligent. Let me just put that out there. That's where empathy comes from. However, if you're a sociopath, you know how to use others' emotions against them because of your emotional intelligence. See what I'm saying? So one night, after having seen her doing her report from the landfill, uh, he realized she was not in a good place, and he shows up to the news station just as she's stabbing the tires of her enemies, and he invites her out for coffee. And he's like, hey, let's just sit down and talk. In that talk, he is able to pull her into his ranks and slowly start to plant that seed in her mind of, hey, if you want this stuff to change, you're going to have to make it change by all means necessary. Also, having seen now um, his work with Harrison and Meadow, because Meadow ends up getting pulled into everything too, when she comes into the hotel bathroom, because they're living in a hotel now because they lost their home, to find, um, well, Harrison decapitating his dude bro boss that Kai helped him kill. Well, not so much helped, but encouraged him to kill. Very much Charlie Manson style. And so Meadow's like, okay, who's that? That's my boss. And then Kai's sitting there. Who's that? Oh, that's our friend who's going to help us have a better life. By all means necessary. He's he finds his targets and he gets in there and he just works on them and works on them and works on them until he gets them to come to his side. Well, this is absolutely what he is doing with Allie. You find out a lot more about what Allie doesn't know about what's going on in her life in this episode. And it was, it was a whoa. I was like, no way, dude. Uh, and I'll be telling you all about that here in a minute because it was just... Woo! Out of, totally out of left field. That is one of the things I absolutely love about the show is just when you think things can't get more weird and just like weird and crazy, they do. And this season, just in the first four episodes, this episode particularly, it was just, I was like, oh shit, that was so cool. Even though it's not stated, it's that whole show them, don't tell them, which I love. So another thing I really like about this show is it's they they write to the intelligence of their audience. They don't assume you're stupid, um, which I I really appreciate with writers. Um, so they show you what's going on and let you kind of start working it out in your brain for yourself. Now back to Emma Roberts' character. I really wanted her character to die, anyways. But then when she revealed that she didn't like puppies, oh, then it was on. It was totally on. I was pulling for her death. Anybody who doesn't like puppies really just doesn't deserve to breathe the same oxygen as the rest of us. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. Puppies are awesome. I pretty much immediately got my wish. <laughs> Huzzah! Because as she was shooting this um, little thing for the community animal shelter, Three masked clowns show up and completely and totally destroy she and her camera guy, who I kind of feel bad for because he was collateral damage, but they destroy them and then the puppy is fine because it's a puppy. It didn't do anything wrong. So let's hope the puppy got adopted by a really cool family and, you know, all is good with the puppy. But Emma Roberts is dead. 
She didn't even make it a half hour. I'm like, that is just... I don't actually dislike Emma Roberts, but I've never really liked her characters on the show. So hey, Meadow likes to draw creepy clown faces. To be more specific, Meadow likes to draw designs for creepy clown masks. Kai is very happy about this. He lets her know that her artwork is definitely going to be utilized for murderous clowns. But like, we didn't already know that. So now we know Kai is behind the smiley faces, or we at least know he's part of that. We absolutely know he's behind the ice cream truck driving murderous posse of clowns. I have a feeling we're about to find out that he's behind a whole lot of other things too. Oh, by the way, he called the hit on Emma Roberts' character. He did it for Beverly. To show her exactly how committed he is to helping her. Because, you know, friendship through murder is friendship that you can count on. I don't think that I ever saw that on a motivational poster. And now, back to the day before election day. This is where we get to see Billy Lord chasing down Chaz Bono. This is also where we find out that Ivy and Winter, Winter who is the nanny who is played by Billy Lord, this is where we find out uh, that they actually know each other because they meet at a protest the day before election day. As in before Winter becomes Oz's nanny. Yeah, right. Like I said, crazy shits abound. Oh, and then towards the end of the episode, they kidnap Chaz Bono's character and handcuff him into a basement. They do this on election night, knowing that Chaz Bono wants nothing more than to get to the polling station and cast his vote for Trump. I keep saying Chaz Bono, but actually the character's name is Gary. Gary, the grocery store owner, you know, from the beginning with the clowns. So basically, long story short, they handcuff him in the basement of the house that Winter and Kai live in. And Kai hears him yelling for help and goes down there with a handsaw. Pun totally intended. Chaz Bono is like, hey, that's great, but I can't saw through that chain on the handcuffs with that. Kai's like, oh, you're not going to saw through the chain. And Chaz is like, oh, I can't saw through the metal on the handcuffs either. Kai's like, oh, you're not going to saw through the metal on the handcuffs. Chaz Bono's like, what? Kai's like, what? And then Chaz Bono proceeds to saw off his own hand so that he can make it to the polling station to vote for Donald Trump. And that is what brings us back around to the beginning of the episode where a very bloody Gary walks out of his voting booth with no hand screaming about Trump's America. So, this episode was very interesting. I liked it. I did. It was awesome. It was a great episode. But it definitely plays into more into not only just that cultish behavior, how you can easily manipulate people that are in difficult situations, but also how you can just easily manipulate people that have certain idealisms. Gary's character, Chas Bowman's character, Gary, doesn't have, as far as it's, it's shown, no financial, no, no um, emotional distress, no stressors in his life. He's simply a Trump supporter. And because he's a Trump supporter and he's such an adamant Trump supporter, I don't want to say Chaz Bono. I know Chaz Bono is not a Trump supporter. Don't worry. I know. Um, but Gary is which is another reason why I'm just so impressed with his performance because he is selling it. And oh, just, um, I, I love Chaz Bono's acting more because I, I just, I, I don't know, it's, it's awesome. And I've rather enjoyed the character on American Horror Story Cult because as much as people want to say, oh, I'm not like that. There are so many people that are like that from both sides. I mean, I'm saying, you know, Trump supporters, Hillary supporters, both sides. The stereotypes that are presented on this season exist for a reason, and if people would read through a large percentage of their social media, they would see why. 
It's mostly just memes. I mean, this entire season of American Horror Story Cult is based almost entirely off of political memes. And I'm dying. I'm just like, this is... This is classic. Um, I've enjoyed the season so much because it's on the nose. It's one of those things where it's like, we, you know, we know what's going on in our country right now. Nobody is blind to it. Well, okay, some people are blind to it. Uh. But for those who aren't, this season's really, yeah, it's poking fun at, at certain things, which, um, you know, it's, it's that creative, um, it's taking that creative liberty to be like, hey, this is what you look like when you do this. And nobody, nobody is innocent. Both sides are being represented in a certain way. Uh, and I feel like that's, it's almost like they're saying what so many people want to say but won't. Uh, and, but at the same time, it's also showing how easily either the weak-minded or people that are in bad situations can be swayed to the dark side. And, uh, you know, Kai's character, he knows how to find them. And he knows how to pick them, and he knows how to work with them. But let's backtrack real quick. Yeah, you know how I said Ivy and Winter know each other and committed aggravated kidnapping together? Yeah. I'm starting to think that perhaps Ivy might also be one of Kai's disciples, which of course is totally weird. But, I mean, Winter is, and Winter was a Hillary supporter, Kai's a Trump supporter, and yet Winter is Kai's most devout disciple. Ivy and Winter just committed a major crime together. So, I mean, you know? And I still think the Good Doctor is connected, too. I'm pretty sure that the Good Doctor is actually one of Kai's disciples. I mean, it's, if you look at the fact that, like, a lot of these crimes are committed against people um, based on their phobias, that whole doctor-patient confidentiality thing, hmm, I mean, you know. So let's see. Let's take a tally. So, of course, we've got Winter. We've got Harrison. And we've got Meadow. We've got Bev Hope, the reporter. We possibly got Ivy. I'm almost positive the good doctor is in on it. And now Kai's prime objective, it almost seems, I'm pretty sure too it'll be shown when we go back into the, the regular timeline in the next episode, which I'm assuming it will, that getting Allie to be uh, one of his disciples is going to become, just Kai's going to be consumed with it until he can pull her to his side. Now, will she be the heroine of the season, or will she succumb to his devices? Who knows? All I know is that this season has been really cool so far and very um, relevant, and I am enjoying it. And I look forward to seeing what is brought to us on next week's episode of American Horror Story Cult. As always, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button on this episode if you can for me, please. Comment below about what your favorite part of the episode was, what your least favorite part of the episode was. If you watched it, if I totally spoiled it for you, I mean, it's whatever. Don't watch if you don't want spoilers, and then watch after, and then we can have a discussion. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please hit the little subscribe button down there or at the end of the video, the little subscribe button. And tell your friends about my show. Tell them how great I am. Even if you don't think I'm that great, they might. You never know. I mean, you don't know what your friends like. And on that note, as always, thank you guys for watching because if it weren't for you watching my show, I would just be talking to my computer. Bye!